Over the last month, month and a half, I've been doing something a little different. And no, it's not tending to my seven week old newborn. It's been riding on one speed. This Alsa Timberjack has been set up single speed and I've been having an absolute blast on it. And it's been quite eye opening. So in this video, I'm gonna share 10 thoughts I've learned along the way about single speeds. Let's do it. So before I get into it, if you like what you see in our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that each one of our videos pops up in your feed. And if you wanna help support us, you can do that by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. This is our annual membership through bikepacking.com that not only includes industry discounts, monthly giveaways, but it also includes the Bikepacking Journal, which is our print publication. If you have more questions or just wanna sign up, there's a link provided below. As always, thank you all so much for the support. I've always admired the simplicity of one speed, and I've always envied the folks that were just riding one speed, especially during bikepacking trips and races that I've participated in. And, well, we're finally here. I did it myself, and I'm pretty excited about it. But before you can even ride a single speed, you obviously need to set it up. Luckily, most bike shops can do this for you and they can help you out with the gear range or the riding terrain that you plan on riding your single speed on. But what I have found out is it's pretty fun and simple to set up on your own. Not to mention it's pretty beneficial to be able to do so so that you can swap out cogs or chain rings. Swapping these parts out more often is just going to build your confidence in working on your own single speed setup. So that leads me to the gearing. And this is probably the most common talking point about single speeding, period. What's your gear inches? What is your chain line? Oh, you're using a 19 tooth on those hills? These are all talking points that single speeders I find use. But obviously much of this is personal preference and dependent on the terrain you're riding your bike on. But one single speed talking point that I pay attention to is gear inches. Gear inches is an equation. It's the diameter of your wheel times the front chain ring divided by the rear cog. So 29 times 32 divided by 20. That number is important to me because that's my reference number for the perfect setup for my style of riding, where I ride. So if I was to mix and match cogs and chain rings, I would want to try to keep that reference number or that gear inches number that I know works for me. So over the past month or so, I've been testing out different ranges. I used a 19 tooth with my 32 tooth up front, which equals 48.8 gear inches. And I found that that was a bit difficult for me to get up some steep hills here in the front range of Colorado. Now we can nerd out about this for a while, but we're not gonna do that in this specific video. That being said, there is another element to single speeding and it's the oval chain ring. I've been using an oval chain ring on my geared bikes for a really long time, but when I used it for my single speed setup, I found that I was able to get on top of that pedal stroke or when you run out of steam and you find yourself in that single speed low cadence crawl. And it is extremely helpful. So another interesting thing about single speeding is it makes you think ahead. Unlike a geared bike where you can just shift right before a challenging obstacle or a steep climb, single speeding requires a bit more attention on the trail so you can understand how much power you need to put forth to take on that tough obstacle or that challenging climb. This idea also has me off the brakes a little bit more, using my momentum, riding the edge of the trail or the berm of the trail, and trusting my tires. Riding a single speed also has me thinking ahead to that specific ride that I'm about to take on. I found that I typically like to either be climbing or descending, and rarely do I wanna find myself on the flat terrain, especially with this specific gearing, which is made for mountain biking. I'll also think ahead and try to understand what specific trails climb better than others. So I might climb the easier trail and descend maybe the steeper trail, sometimes. So I have jumped on my geared bike every so often in between my rides on my single speed. And what I have found is I'm a faster rider with my geared bike because of my single speed. The single speed has trained my body to be faster in certain situations. Specifically when I'm spinning really quickly like this, my body is building those fast twitch muscles. And those are super helpful when you're climbing a really challenging obstacle 
and need that quick power. Just looking at previous rides versus single speed rides recently, this is actually translated to me being a faster climber on this bike. I'm working much harder on my single speed while I'm climbing than I am on my geared bike because I can, well, let off the gas with all those gears. In general, riding a single speed may not be faster overall, but it's certainly going to make you a stronger rider. So maybe one of the best benefits of a single speed is there's just less stuff. Less stuff means less stuff to break. Back in 2017, I was taking on the Colorado Trail and the first day I was out there, I plopped my bike over at mile like 15, right at the South Platte River there, and I broke my shifter and I had to bail and I had to restart the next day. If I did that with this bike, nothing would have happened. Maybe a scratch on the frame. So if your single speed setup is set up properly, you won't have any issues. You won't have to adjust your barrel. You won't have to adjust your B-tension or your limit screws. Single speed setups are much easier on the pocket. Cassettes, pulley wheels, cable and housing, it all wears out. Maybe the only thing you'll have to replace is a chain ring, a cog, and your chain. Not to mention, all of this stuff is really heavy. The back end of this Timberjack is actually extremely light, much lighter than the front end with my suspension fork. By ditching all of this stuff, I'm saving over a thousand grams. That's pretty significant. So speaking of forks, I now understand the reason behind the rigid single speed. Oftentimes I thought it was just a fad where people were just trying to be as badass as possible. And that probably still is the case, but it's nice to have a rigid front end specifically when you're climbing because you're usually standing up and you're using your power. And when you have a suspension fork, it's taking away that energy that you're pushing into the bike. So I've been using the lockout on this Marzocchi Bomber Z2. And while it's not 100% rigid, it does a good enough job. And that leads me to my next point. Single speeding, it's a full body workout. Sure, mountain biking already is a full body workout, but if you take away 11 or 10 gears, it makes it that much more challenging. After my first ride on this bike, I was completely wrecked. Everything from my forearms, my wrists, my shoulders, my lower back, my upper back, everything just hurt. This is because when you're standing up and using your momentum, your muscles are all super tense. And while my body did get used to that after a few weeks, it definitely took some adjustment. While your legs are getting a little bit of a break on both the flats and descents, the legs are typically working harder on a single speed when you're climbing. So between that and using your upper body, it's definitely a full body workout. So that leads me to my next point. You're going to be standing a lot. And because of this, there's a few things that I found out that are helpful. First off is having somewhat of a stiff shoe or a shoe that transfers power better than a hiking specific shoe. But the upside to standing is less time on this thing. And less time on this thing means less issues down here. And that's a good thing, especially when you're bike packing. Maybe one of the harder things for me to understand about single speed was it's okay to walk. I'm a stubborn rider. I always try to successfully climb while I'm on my bike. But when you reach the end of that rope, it's okay to jump off the bike and just hike with it. And I found that getting off the bike allows you to slow down, look around and enjoy your surroundings. And it just might help motivate you next time to try to get a little bit further up that hill. Finally, the biggest takeaway I've learned about single speeding is it's hard. Sure, you might not be working nearly as hard on the flats or say the descents, but those climbs definitely make up for it. And it's certainly hard on the body, but it makes you a stronger rider overall. But in the end, single speed, it's the simplest way to ride your bike. And it's going to get you to the exact same places that a geared bike will. And it just reminded me how simple bikes are, why we ride bikes in general, and to just stop taking yourself so seriously. Have fun. We're out here to enjoy ourselves. Just do that. And you can do that any way you wish, but I think doing it on one gear is pretty cool. So I wanna hear from you all now. Why do you like single speeding for folks that ride? And if you don't, what's holding you back? Leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further.